Hello everybody, this is Joel The Nose coming to you from Miami as usual. And today I have a special treat. I'm going to do a review of the Brooks Brothers Fragrance New York. And this one has special meaning to me because Brooks Brothers, for those of you who don't know, is a classic American fashion house. One of really the old school classics, think, think Mad Men era of New York. 50s, 60s, uh, classic Hollywood. I mean, this classic power suit, classic, uh, just, I don't know, very old school gentleman, very old school. And I still wear a lot of their stuff because to me it just evokes from a different era and it just has something very genteel about it. So having said that, the Brooks Brothers fragrance is actually the very first fragrance I remember growing up. My dad wore this. My dad always wore Brooks Brothers clothes. And I remember as a small child, almost over 40 years ago, him coming home at night and I would smell the fragrance on him. I don't remember what version or what, what uh, kind of Brooks Brothers cologne he had. I remember it came in like a, almost like a bamboo, like a glass bottle cover with like, like kind of like bamboo. It's very interesting. But so when I was in a couple weeks ago with my daughter taking her shopping and we were going through some of the discount stores like Ross and Marshall's, I found at Ross a bottle of what's called Brooks Brothers New York. I'll show that to you here. So you can see it, Brooks Brothers New York. Comes in a, it's like a very deep purple bottle with the Brooks Brothers gold logo. Beautiful, simple, but clean bottle. I found this bottle and it comes, you can see a nice gold cap, uh, at Ross for $15. So this was a blind buy, I go against my general rule. When you find a blind buy this cheap and this, you know, you know, it's really, uh, I guess it's worth taking a chance. And that's what I did here because again, it evoked memories of my childhood of the past. And I won and I actually smelled it in the store. I thought it smelled good. So I bought it. So that's the kind of backstory behind why I'm doing this review. Now let me kind of get into the basics. Brooks Brothers again is the house, classic American house. This is not French, this is not Italian, this is not a niche, this is a American designer, American house brand. I normally review niche brands, uh, but again, I make exceptions when I find cool stuff like this. So, again, the bottle, you can see the cap. It's a you know nice gold cap, it's nothing, you know, it's very light, it's nothing extravagant, it's nothing too fancy, but it all goes together well. You can see the gold vaporizer on top. Uh, this was two th released in 2008, so it's 11 years old now. It is definitely a preteen and probably got some attitude like most preteens do if you have kids. Um, the Interestingly, the again, as you know, my notes, my attorney side, copious notes. The nose behind this, the, the fragrance uh, perfumer is Richard Herpin, who, he, if you... If you know anything about him, this guy is, is very prolific. He's designed for a lot of major houses. This guy has had a very successful career. He's done stuff for Tom Ford, including Oud Wood. He's done the Tim McGraw brand. He's done Paris Hilton. He's done CK, Calvin Klein, Marc Jacobs. This guy is designed for everybody. So clearly, he's very popular. Uh, so it doesn't surprise me that he did one for Brooks Brothers. Uh, the notes as you read them from Brooks Brothers are as follows. The top notes are bergamot, verbena, pedigrain oil, and mandarin. The mid notes are carnation, iris root, and cumin. And the base notes are oak moss, vetiver, and musk. So, let me get right into it. As I already showed you the bottle, very cool bottle. Um, I'm gonna give you a spray here, so you guys can see. Very good, you know, very good vaporizer, very good spray there. Okay. Woo, I gotta say, I, I love it. So this is this is a freshie. This is one that I think you'll see will get, especially in the office, because Brooks Brothers is such a classic men's fragrance and office and business um, fashion house. Clearly, I think this is designed for wearing to work every day, and you're gonna see that it would work very well there. Right off the bat, um, I can tell you this, I applied this in the morning at around nine o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> and right off the bat, let me say about this, again, obviously it's very cheap, but look, just like New York, it's like a good slice of cheap New York pizza. 
Sometimes, most of the time, we like enjoy good meals, but every once in a while you want McDonald's, right? Or whatever your favorite fast food is. This is the equivalent of that. It's like the fast food uh, of fragrance. And sometimes the fast food is really good. And in this case, I gotta say, this was really good. The initial smell, I mean, it would smell like a lot of other fragrances, very you know typical designer fragrances, but it's very fresh, it's very clean, it's very bright. Um, I would say it's kind of soapy. I like a little bit of soapy. I like not too powdery soapy. This is almost like Irish Spring, I would say. Um, if you've ever used Irish Spring, you know, it very much smells like that. Uh, you definitely get the bergamot at the top. You know, I think clearly heavy in the bergamot. I think um, also the mandarin, you do get a little citrus note at the top. Uh, and I, a touch of sweetness uh, also. So it's kind of got a lot going on there. I, I liken it, if you ever walked into a coin laundry or I guess, you know, like a laundromat when you walk in and you get that smell of the detergent and the soaps. This reminds me of that. It feels like, again, the name of this actual perfume is New York. This reminds me if I was walking to a laundromat in New York City and I just got overwhelmed by the smell of the detergent and the soap and the smell. <laughs> Picture that. This is what this smells like initially, but, I, but in a good way. I, I really mean this. Um, so about an hour in, it starts to definitely dry down. The, the, the top notes are essentially gone at that point. The carnation, which is uh, in the, the mid note, I got a little hint of that. Um, the, vetiver, the vetiver and the musk really start to kick in. It starts to warm up. This fragrance becomes really kind of warm for me at that point. And then I'll say this, I don't have much experience with iris root in fragrances. It's not something I'm always necessarily drawn to, but this time, I could really detect this iris root here. And that is one of the main mid notes. To me, iris root is like root beer. I felt like I was drinking an A&W root beer or sniffing it with the bubble and the carbonation coming up. It smelled like root beer on your skin. Warm, sweet, and bright. Have you ever had one of those little A&W um, root beer candies? Sometimes you get them at Halloween since that's coming up a little, come in little, they're little hard candies. Taste just like that. So again, this evokes a lot of very good memories for me. Obviously I have the family history, I have this kind of uh, candy history, this root beer, child, all this was very good, but it comes across again, I think in a very manly way. Um, 11, 15, about two hours in, everything starts to fade. Uh, again, at this point, it's still a little bit of that iris root, but mostly the vetiver and the musk, it's very warm, it's very pleasant. Um, I did have a smell test from the ladies in my office, and I can tell you this, of the five, of the, let's see, the five they've smelled in the last two weeks, this was their favorite. So there you go. The, by far not even close to the most expensive or the best ingredients or the nicest, but the most fresh and classic and traditional, I think, scent. And this is what they said. That's what they said, flat out. They thought this was the most masculine and they thought it was their favorite and they thought it was the best. So, you know, it's gonna be a compliment getter, I can tell you that. Uh, basically, after three hours, the scent is almost gone. So, major problem with this. I think they could have added some more fixatives in this, maybe even ISO Super E, or ISO E Super, I'm sorry, um, to, to maybe give it a little more kick, to give it a little more uh, you know, staying power because I've worn this a few times now and after three hours, you've got to reapply. So if you're going to go throughout the day, it's an eight, nine hour day, you're going to have to apply this sucker three different times. Um, and look, it's cheap, so I don't care for 15 bucks that I got it for, it's well worth it. If I paid the retail 50, 60 bucks in a normal store, I probably would be a little disappointed. But in the bargain bin, this is well worth it. It's a compliment getter. It's fresh, it's manly, it's classic, um, but it's gonna be gone after about three hours and you're gonna have to reapply it, literally reapply it. You'll have only a barely a scent at that point. Um, so that's it. Uh, I hope uh, you guys found this useful. I would definitely recommend, and I will say that this does merit a dance. Kind of, uh, woo, ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, because I would buy this again, especially for $15. Not for $60, but for $15, I would totally buy this again. So I will be on the hunt. If I see this in discount stores again, I will buy it. Um, a 
again, summary, uh, fresh, clean, root beer, laundromat, masculine, classic Brooks Brothers scent, only lasts about three hours, worth it for the price if you get it really cheap like I did, and uh, I hope you found it useful. If you did, please leave some comments, let me know, subscribe or ring the bell, it would be really great, I'd really appreciate it. And uh, I hope everybody has a great day, and we'll see you soon. This is Joel the Nose.